What's up guys? Um, today I'm going to be talking about the cause of suffering. In my head, I believe that essentially the reason why people suffer is because they do not understand how reality truly works. So with that said, I present to you the ultimate law, or the one law that you should truly in every single situation always abide by. And it says, if I plant a seed and this seed is a positive seed, when it ripens, it will come about and bloom as what I call my happiness. If I plant a negative seed and it ripens, it will bloom and come about as my suffering. So what does this mean? How do you plant a positive seed and how do you plant a negative seed? Well, human beings, we are what we call intentional beings. Think of infinite energy in a bag. So what this means is we operate on a multi-dimensional level, meaning right now I'm standing in the physical plane but I'm also standing in the mental plane, the astral plane, and the etheric plane, and many more. So I'm standing in many planes at once, right? So there are three ways in which you can plant a positive seed. You can plant a positive seed with your thought, so having positive thoughts with your words, so speaking positively or with your actions, doing positive acts. They're, the same goes for negative seeds. You, by having bad thoughts, you're planting negative seeds in your mind. By having bad speech, bad-mouthing someone behind their back, treating people like trash or without integrity, lying, manipulating people, etc., that's bad speech. And then bad actions, murder, stealing, um, taking things that isn't yours or that has not been explicitly give, been given to you, um, manipulating a situation to gain a specific outcome, so withholding information from someone, etc., etc., etc. All those things plant a negative seed. What this means is this. Essentially, Imagine, let's just theoretically say that you're a god, right? Or you are um, in control of a kingdom. I prefer that better. You're a king, right? So what this means is it is up to you. It is your responsibility to dictate what is a good action in the kingdom, like what is the right behavior and what is not accept what is behavior that is not to be tolerated and how do you do this by your own personal actions so say for example you lie by you lying you're pretty much saying that that is a positive behavior by you doing an act of charity or by you being truthful at all times even to your detriment. So say for example, like I'll just take this situation. I'm applying for app testing. I'm going to be an app tester for a company and they give they were gonna give me a thirty five dollar upfront fee to pay for the developer account because they to perform reviews for apps you have to have a Google developer account and Google charges you a twenty one time twenty five dollar fee. The thing is, I already have a developer account, right? And my heart was telling me, let them know that, but ask for the full amount anyways, right? What I could have done is instead just taking the money for myself and kept it. They wouldn't have known, but I would have. And that's what makes the difference. We can go back to the Bible when they, for example, when after Jesus gives a speech about um, eat of my body, drink, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, right? 
what happened, every, all, that whole crowd that saw Jesus perform miracles, heal the sick, revive the dead, etc. They just um, multiply food, like from one to like, do, 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 somehow, by magic. All those people that he helped just like vanished, up and gone. And then there were the 12 left. And what did he say? They're like, some say you're this, some say you're that. But what did Jesus respond? That's what I'm trying to get to. He said, who do you say I am? Because he doesn't care about other people's opinion. He doesn't care about what happened to you. He doesn't care about the fact that you've been wronged or someone took advantage of you or someone attacked you, whatever. He doesn't care about that. He cares about your response. How are you going to respond to this? Are you going to go down the valley of the shadows and do the eye for an eye thing and try to get yours, try to get revenge? Basically filling your mind with a negative seed or are you going to go towards the path of heaven and respond positively and turn the other cheek? Because your action dictates the seed that is being planted. What is this idea of seed? Think of it as a habit or a pattern. We are habitual creatures. Meaning, if I wake up today and my body gets a positive chemical response from the fact that I do meditation and yoga and I work out, I am going to want to repeat that experience over and over and over again. Same thing if I wake up today and I decide to drink, right, and it feels good, I'm going to want to repeat the same experience over and over again. By the way, this is Maul, guys. Say hello. So anyways, that's how you plant a seed, by basically taking action on whatever it is that that thing is, right? So what you need to be careful of is what are you making permissible in your mind and what are you saying is not permissible? Because your mind truly rules your reality. Meaning if today you say that it is not okay to eat bad food and talk trash on people behind their back and be nothing but a gentleman to girls and all people around you, that changes reality for you. People are not going to talk trash about you behind your back if very little, you're going to get a lot of respect from girls because they feel that you actually care about them instead of just trying to get in their pants. And you're actually going to be attracting an incredibly positive energy around you. See, I tell my friend this all the time. Whatever boomer, it's like life is like a boomerang. And whatever you put out there, whether it be by your thought, by your word or your action, it comes back to you. So it's almost like we're placed on this earth to only throw positive boomerangs and rip the rewards that come from that. Nothing more, nothing less. This is exactly the idea behind the golden age. Because if everyone could do this, can you imagine what kind of world we have a world where even when you're so, when something when you feel slighted you don't react to that negativity and you choose to be positive when you feel cheated you don't react to that negativity and instead you react positively and choose to love in spite of that when you've been hurt you don't stay focused on that negativity and instead focus on the love that that person has given you and is still capable of giving you. Imagine the world we live in. Ultimately, remember this. You are the master of your own fate. 
the way I like to picture of it is like you're the wind. Think of it like this, right? Everything that is alive, that works, operates on what some people will call wind energy. In the Bible, they call it the breath of life. Everything that is alive has this in it, right? Now, physics will physics is just good at like making the big, showing you the big picture and then showing you the small, small details, blah blah blah. So they'll say that, for example, this is um, the reason why you're alive is potential energy converted into kinetic energy, or they'll say that your emotion created by the conversion between the potential energy to the kinetic energy. But it's funny because it, no matter what you call it, it's still pointing to the same phenomena. You are that spirit, that wind, right? And so what, what it is essentially is God just, imagine your body is like a cloud. Remember in the Bible, he says he takes man all across lands and shows him different stuff. That's essentially what your life is. You go through all these different experiences. So it's like God just shoots you with a gun, right? Here's an experience. Here's an experience. Here's an experience. Here's an experience. Here's an experience, right? Over and over and over and over and over again. And what he wants from you is to say, thank you, God, for this experience, no matter what the experience is. Because by saying, thank you, God, you are recognizing that not only this happened for your growth, this happened for you, not to you, but also that ultimately it is a good thing that happened. The two things I just said are similar, but the subtleties in them create two incredible dimensions. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. So he just shoots you with all these experiences and you say, thank you, thank you. And by doing that, you're putting your RAS or you're putting your focus on the positive things of that experience while discarding, throwing away all the negative stuff. It's like applying a filter, right? And so by only capturing the positive things, you're still able to just spiral upwards go up and up and up because those positive things will be teaching you. It's like that 1%, 1%, 1% to greatness, 1% to greatness. Every time you focus on negative, on a negative thing, you slide back. Have you noticed, for example, when you're depressed, you don't want to do anything. When you're anxious or stressed, you don't want to do anything. You literally feel like you're stuck in place. It's like a mud pit. As opposed to when you're positive, you just want to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and nonstop. Especially when you hit a flow state. So that's what it is, right? Just always focus on the positivity. Now, to go back to the seeds, always strive to plant good seeds. If you can help someone, do it. If you can say, tell someone, I love you, do it. If you can... Make someone smile by saying a simple hello. Do it. If you can pick someone up and dance with them and bring like the biggest smile to their face, do it. If you can kiss someone, do it. If you can make someone laugh, do it. If you can, <laughs> there's so many ways to be an incredible source of positivity to someone's life and it's not hard you just have to do it every single time you're doing it you're reinforcing a neural pathway in your brain that says this is the right thing to do over and over and over again and the more you do it it becomes easier and easier and then it, it's almost becomes second nature and then this is what Ta-da, your personality. People always think that personality is set in stone, like, I was born depressed. I was born a sad butt. Me, 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 me. When really, no, it's not. You just practice the habit of being sad over and over and over again to the po point that your neural pathway was so reinforced 
that anything that was not negative just got wiped out. And so you just became this negative person. And then you become, you think it's your personality. There is no such thing as personality. We are nothing more than just patterns built on top of patterns and patterns and patterns. Or habit built on top of habit and habit and habit. What is Kobe Bryant still doing to this day? Practicing his cutting into the drive and his three-pointer and his jump shot. What is um, Landon Donovan doing to this day? Practicing his dribbling and his awareness on his field and his finishing. What is Serena Williams and her sister doing today? Practicing their swing and their backhand and their serve. Patterns and habits on top of patterns and habits on top of patterns and habits. So, how do you end suffering for yourself? You just plant good seeds. You just reinforce to your mind that the right behavior is the only behavior to live by. No matter what their circumstances, no matter what people say, no matter if people make fun of you for doing it, or if people say that you're a pussy, or you're gay, or you're weak as a man, blah, blah, blah. Because people always try to bring down those that are of higher frequency than them. That's a funny, natural thing that always happens. So you just always do the right thing over and over and over again. And then before you know it, those seeds will bloom. You'll find that you always have money when you need it. You'll find that just all these really awesome, cool people come back in, or come into your life. And then you'll find that you'll attract the right type of girls, the ones that actually love you for you, as opposed to loving you for what you can do. You'll find that you'll have an abundance of money, like an abundance of jobs. Like, you won't even need to look hard. Money will find you instead of you looking for money. Your life will truly, truly change for the best. What happens if you plant a negative seed? You'll find, for example, that if you lie a lot, People will have a tendency not to want to get close to you or not to want to take your word for truth. You'll find that it is hard to make a connection with other people because you feel like they're looking at you in some other way or you'll feel like if people are out to get you, you'll find that money is incredibly scarce and resources are even scarcer. And then you will find that you always have to fight for every single inch that you get only to lose it anyways. Those are two ridiculously different realities but born from the same point. So that's my message to you. End your suffering today plant the good seed. Until next time.